What's going on everybody, Captain Gino here. And today we're gonna to talk about something that's very important to me. I find instrumental on how I catch my fish, how my clients catch their fish, and the size of the fish we're catching. And that is how to understand the barometric pressure, how it affects fishing or the fish, and how to utilize that information to allow you to catch more fish and bigger fish. And or if you're in a tournament, to keep you in that positive mental state. Any of you tournament guys that are out there, you've been there before, you're fishing the tournament and you're wondering, are these the right fish? Did they move? Did something happen? Did someone come through here and, and, and bang on them? You have all these things going through your mind. At least if you understand how the weather, right? The barometric pressure, because it's associated with weather, how it affects the fishing and kind of help you stay in a better mental state. And even the guys that are out there, weekend warriors that are out there, that are hopping out on the, on the lake and they're wondering what is going on and not catching fish, allow them to stay in a better, better mood and catch more fish and bigger fish. So. Let's get right to it. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a guy, this is what I do by trade. This is how I pay my bills. This is what my dad did for a living. Second generation, and I make my money out on the water. For a long time, I, I kind of ignored it. Growing up, my dad would always make me look up the barometric pressure. He'd make me look up solar lunar tables, like the major and minor feeds. And I just thought it was uh, absolutely insane and a huge waste of time. As I got older, I started to notice a huge increase in activity because my brother would be like, oh, the barometric pressure this, or the, the major and minor feed this. And, and I'm like, man, I wonder if there's something to it. So I was talking to friends and we start, I said, guys, let's just see how this affects the fishing. So I'd be out there uh, on the water and I'd see, you can look up predictions. And I found that like 24 hour maximum prediction is, is what you want to use. But you can look up predictions and kind of see when this barometer is going to drop or rise or any cha expected changes. And I started to see a correlation with the number of fish we were catching, how aggressive the fish were, and most importantly to me, the size of the fish, right? So when we're talking about barometric pressure, what's a high, what's a low, it really depends on the month in your area specifically. If you look up your area by month, you can see what the averages are. Somewhere around 29 to 30, somewhere in that parameters, 29.9 will be the normal. Some months will be a little bit lower uh, than others. But this is good for you to know and have a starting point. On most phones, you have the ability to download an app for barometric pressure where you can kind of mark where, what it's at when you start fishing. Anyways, understanding that that is the norm, right? Anything moving up or down are gonna have effects on the wildlife. One indicator of a low pressure would be a storm front moving in. As it passes, you're gonna see the clouds come in, the wind's gonna pick up, things are gonna get darker. That's when that barometer is falling down. Once it passes, it's clear, it's bright, there's no clouds in the sky, or very few, they're very high, and it'll continue to clear from there. That's that's signs that your barometric pressure is rising. So nicer day outside, when you look outside, you're like, oh, it's just bluebird skies, no wind, it's, it's gorgeous out. If you're a fisherman, you know that not always, but oftentimes that is not ideal, or in many cases you feel not ideal. Being on the water, just I decided I'm gonna start really looking at these things, and and because I noticed there's, there's times in the day, like I have these, areas that are just absolutely bananas. And I go there and they're just completely dead. And then all of a sudden they, they go down when the storms come rolling in, right? Why does this happen? Well, these fish know that you have inclement weather coming in, which is gonna cause all kinds of problems. High winds and rains, it could rise the water level of the lake, it could push bait all over the place. Whatever it does, it triggers them and says, we need to eat, we need to feed, there's a storm coming through, right? If you're talking about deer, things like that, these, things, these animals are up moving and need to feed and then they're gonna bed up during the storm, right? So these fish will turn on and activate. And then once that storm comes in, generally the fish will end up slowly starting to suspend. As that storm passes, your, your, your clouds are gonna kind of dissipate. There's gonna be less and less over the next coming day to even three days. And then it's eventually gonna be bluebird skies, super duper high pressure, super duper tough fishing. Oftentimes you're throwing jerk baits, things that suspended fish, right? So, uh, and those fish don't stop eating. They just fed super heavy right before that storm. They stocked up, right? They got super fat, they gorge. They're, you know, if you've been out on the water, like the perfect storm and there's floating shad everywhere and it's just absolute mayhem down there underneath the water and it's fish after fish doubling up, fish are falling your bait to the, to, that is what I'm talking about, right? So these fish have just gorged in that situation and now they've progressed into this high pressure uh, situation where you have no protection as an angler, right? They're seeing your line, they're seeing your lure coming through the air, they're higher up in the water column, there's no ripple on the water, there's no wind, there's no clouds to mask anything. You're exposed and they're full. So they're like, meh, maybe not. A lot harder, right? How does this benefit us as anglers? Hey guys, real quick before we move on. If you're into lessons like this, if you want something a little bit more structured, a little bit more in depth, stay tuned till the end of the video 
And I'm gonna tell you about something that's gonna help you out tremendously next time you're out on the water. How does this benefit us as anglers? For me, as a guide, it helps me to let my clients know based off the prediction I find, and I like to look that day, not, not 48 hours, not 72 hours, that day. Based on what I see prediction-wise, I think the bites can be best, guys, at like 11 o'clock, and I think at two o'clock, that's when the big fish are gonna bite, right? Because that's when the barometer bottoms out and aligns with something else. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. So that allows me to set the mood for them, right? To keep them in the game. Because if you know, as anglers, when you're out there, if you think that you're defeated, you're gonna just have a terrible day. If you're, all of a sudden you got your buddy Bob on the back of the boat, the fish is like once a year, you're out there constantly, you think you're a decent stick and Bob starts wearing you out. And then it's a downward spiral. Now you're catching nothing, right? For me, it helped my people stay in a good frame of mind. Guys, we're gonna catch one here, one there until this time, and then it's gonna go down. Keeps them positive, so when it happens, they capitalize on it. In tournaments, I look and I'm like, okay, I think the little bite's gonna be here and here. These are gonna be the best windows. And I go out there and I fight the best I can, and I never get deterred, right? And I'm not the best uh, by any means, trust me, but based on my experience, the lifetime I've spent on the water, it really helps me tremendously because I know, okay, Gino, the, the bite's gonna happen this time, this time. Because you've all been out there, you've been in this situation before, whether you're in a tournament or just fun fishing, and you think your fish got smashed on by somebody else, they're not there anymore, something happened, they moved, something has changed, and you just abandon it and move on. Or you're practicing or you're learning a new lake and you're going through an area and you're like, this area sucks, this area sucks, never go back to it. But it was the juice and you just missed it, it was just a bad time. And also, we know that under a high pressure situation, these fish are often gonna suspend, right? And you know, are there other contributing factors? Water clarity, if a storm muddies the water up, things like that. Yes, there's other contributing factors, right? But this is such a good way to get started. And then you can learn about those outside influences there later on. One that I find goes hand in hand with this, and I will ultimately never just use the barometer and not use this, is your solar lunar table, right? Your major minor feeds. Those things are insane. Your granddad maybe talked about it or your dad maybe talked about it. You don't even know what it is. And I don't really understand the science behind it, nor do I care to. I know it has something to do with gravitational pull, whatever. All I know is, is that joker right there. If nothing happens with that barometer, if it's, if it's steady, 92.99 all day, and my major feed is from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. is my minor, and then I have another major at 5 till seven or whatever, those suckers are gonna turn on in those three windows if there's no outside influence. They're gonna, that's when those bites are gonna happen. When you drive down the road, that's when those cattle are gonna be up, eat, the cows are gonna be up eating. The birds are gonna be going off during those feeds, the whole nine yards. The only other major influence I find is gonna be the weather, right? And the weather is gonna be the barometer. Say your major feed, you have a major feed from like say 11 to two, and your barometer goes from 31.5 to 27. And over that time frame, it takes two hours. It starts at noon and then at two o'clock, it's at the bottom at 20. Like that's when your big fish are gonna eat. That's when your best fish is gonna, you better be on your best fish during those times. It's gonna go down. And you've heard guys in the tournaments or your buddy out of the water, we call them fish in 30 minutes. We call it like, that is why. That is why they caught those fish then. So if you have that in your pocket, right? If you have that piece of information, you can be that guy on those fish at the right time. More often, I guarantee it. This is based on my experience. All right, guys, real quick before we move on, I want to tell you guys something I've been working on. Those of you who know me know that I guide a ton of tournament anglers or guys maybe that got out of the sport or got back in and they're trying to learn and grow as an angler. Maybe they want to learn electronics. Maybe they're trying to learn a specific body of water like the Harris Chain or the St. John's River. Maybe they're a high school kid trying to make it into college fishing or at the college level and trying to make the tour or trying to make the, the pro circuit through fish in the opens or something like that. This is my area of expertise. This is what I do. And I noticed that there would be 20 guys, 30 guys, 40, 50, even 60 guys sometimes in a single event that I can never get to. I thought long and hard, I put together Fishingology down online along with Tyler Post. There's dozens and dozens of lessons structured in a way that help you learn. There's waypoints to reference. If we talk about a shell bar video, you can input the waypoints on, you know, the Harris chain and go out there and look at some shell and have a reference point. If there's, you know, bluegill beds or brush piles, there's brush pile waypoints you can go and reference, right? There's live Q and A every week to answer your questions, help you to utilize the site to make the most out of your time. You know, it's super easy to fall into all these videos on YouTube and just take all this information in and no, there's no structure to it. You can't really utilize it. So I put it together in simplest form in a way that I've found over the years, over my time, helping these anglers grow. That's gonna help you grow the most in the least amount of time, the most efficient way, and on some of the best bass fisheries in the state of Florida. That's fishnology.online. It's gonna be like what I have here, only way better quality, way more structured, 
way more informative and you have me every Friday, live Q&A. You can do private one-on-ones and even waypoint packages customized for you, for your situation, for your tournament, for your event, for your body of water, right? Check it out. It's gonna save you a ton of time if you're interested in growing and becoming a better angler. And if you guys would like to see a more, like I said, scientific approach on this particular channel, just leave it down in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys think. I'd love to hear your opinion on this subject matter. I think as a community, we can all grow together, right? And that's why fishing has gotten a little bit easier to get into these days than it was back in the 80s when I started. The real closed lip, and it still is in a, in a way, but at least there's some of us out there, you guys watching, myself and other YouTubers, that are able to share information like this. Leave it down in the comments. I really, truly, it does matter to me. I'd love to see it. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Thanks for sticking with me. Until next time, everybody, tight line.